you still have to look hard for it sometimes, but images of black people, black men particularly, are starting to reflect reality a little more. But you can always find the black stereotype without looking too far. A new docuseries on Discovery Plus looks at the origins of black male stereotypes in America. One of the executive producers of the show is Kristen V. Carter, and she joins us now. Hey, Kristen, good to meet you. Welcome. Nice to meet you, too. Thanks so much for having me. So all of our guests who are Newark natives, we got to check their Newark bona fides. So uh, where did you grow up in Newark? Did you go to school in Newark as well? Yes, I went to university high school before okay. I went to a boarding school, actually. So shout out to Newark. I'm super excited and proud to be a Newark native for sure. <laughs> right. uh, another thing you don't you also don't see is um, female executive producer and you see even less black female executive producers. How has that been changing in the industry, if at all? I think that diversity just with gender and race has been, um, you know, increasing. So definitely there are more and more female executives. I'm very proud to be an executive producer on this project. It's been a labor of love for everybody. And I'm just looking forward to everyone seeing the show. So just having the responsibility of overseeing this series, you know, with our other amazing executive producers and just making sure it is as heartfelt and warm as it is educational. We're just really, really excited for the premiere on Saturday. It's called Profiled the Black Man. It's a four part series and you break it down into uh, what I felt was like the four uh, basic food groups of black stereotypes. Mm -hmm. So I want to go through them uh, with you. Episode one is uh, Black men are dangerous. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that particular episode is all about tackling that stereotype, getting to the historical context of where that stereotype came from, and then also shedding light on the truths, how, you know, society has dealt with Black men and perceived Black men. And then what are the stories, what are the profile pieces that we have for Black men who have encountered the stereotype and then also shattered it by living the lives that they lead. So I'm really, really excited and proud of that episode in particular because it's very intense, but also, you know, very educational and inspiring as well. We get to see three profile packages of different men who have engaged with that stereotype, who have been victims of that stereotype actually, and they've gone on to really triumph in their lives. At the core of all of this is media, right? And media, media perceptions of black men as dangerous. We still see it uh, today, even though there's been some evolution of black characters in television and film, and we'll get to that in a second, but you still always see that, the dangerous black man. You do, and so we're really hoping that everyone engages with this in a way that they're not just watching, but they're thinking about how they have perceived black men and also how they can be in action around changing this perception so that black men are seen as loving, caring leaders, all of that. So yeah, definitely uh, media has had a definite uh, impact on it, but also the community at large has the opportunity to engage with the stereotype differently. Absent fathers, black men are absent fathers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that stereotype, we basically chose four pervasive stereotypes that we thought were really large in, inside the community. And this has not only been something that's historical, but also something that we have engaged with in our personal lives as well, really making sure that we're, ch we're changing the narrative by sharing the stories of Black men who are present, whether they're in the home or not, whether they're co-parenting or not. And so we get an opportunity to look at three amazing uh, examples of Black male fatherhood with DJ Damage, who is a DJ who co-parents, uh, Kendrick Ransom, who is an agriculturalist, who owns family land, and then also Terrell and Jarius, who are two LGBT dads who actually had two children through surrogacy. So we really wanted to showcase and highlight different types of Black fatherhood. I'm super proud of that episode in particular. And fatherhood is, is something that in the Black community, you know, when, when uh, critics want to put Black men in a box or the Black community in a box, they always talk about the absent father, the the absence of the nuclear family. Yet so many uh, Black families together, vibrant, loving, and, and you don't see that enough. 
you don't see that enough. And so that's why as soon as we get into the episode, we start breaking down the statistics, the statistics, excuse me. Uh, we break that down immediately. We get into the meat and potatoes of the truth and then we're able to address some sub myths. So we're really, really excited for people to think about that stereotype differently because it's simply not true. And so when you see the percentages and you see the information, I'll be very excited for folks to see the truth in what's really happening with Black fatherhood. And, and that's kind of something that uh, is a, a great part of this program is that you do, you, you say, well, here's the stereotype and, and here is the reality. And that goes through uh, uh, to men devaluing Black women, for instance. Right, right. Loving Black love is, is not something that you see a lot on so-called mainstream television or films. Yeah, I think we're seeing more Black love. I think that there are a lot of content creators who are really intentional about showing Black love. And so that's something that we wanted to do. With this particular stereotype, we wanted to address head on interracial relationships, colorism, how media has perceived Black women, and then how Black men have perceived Black women through the media. That was just very, very interesting for us to do a deep dive in terms of the research behind it. And so I think out of the four episodes, that will be the one that Black Twitter will be talking a lot. We're okay. looking forward to the conversation around it. So yeah, definitely proud of that episode as well. And then the last episode is Black Men Don't Cry. Yeah, so we wanted to take a look at Black male vulnerability. You know, I think in the community, we've often heard Black men are emotionally unavailable and things of that nature. And so we really wanted to talk about the historical context behind Black Men Don't Cry and then think about mental health, therapy, Black love, um, sexuality. We get into everything. And so I'm just really excited for everyone to see how we've broken down all four episodes. We needed an episode per stereotype because we really wanted to be as thorough as possible. And so, yeah, I'm just looking forward to our viewers being inside the conversation, not just watching, but really thinking about how they have interacted with these stereotypes and how they are going to also change the narrative just in their own actions and lives. Who defines Blackness if not black people, you know, and, and I was just thinking just in, in terms of film from Melvin Van Peebles to Spike Lee to Jordan Peele, each one of those made a big jump in terms of defining blackness. Where are we today, do you think, uh, uh, in defining blackness? That's a great question. I think that we have a wonderful opportunity to continue to define blackness. I don't think that we are a monolith. I think that blackness is diverse. And so I think you'll be able to see that in the profile pieces that we select and profile the black man. And also just the different vantage points that we hear from our celebrity commentators who talk about their experiences with the stereotype as well. So I think that we have a great opportunity to continue to show blackness in all its forms. And I'm really, really excited for more content creators, more women, more men, more executives to just continue to tell their stories because we need everybody's stories in order to show that Blackness is diverse. Just in terms of what we've seen out there in terms of film and, and television in the past few years, I wrote a few down off the top of my head, beautiful uh, love stories like If Beale Street Could Talk, some of that stuff like that, we're starting to see more of on commercial television, or is this something that um, some of the streaming services like Discovery Plus are able to do? Yes, I think that there is not only an opportunity, but I think that there's a call for different distributors to showcase Blackness in all forms. And I think they're doing that. So I'm really excited for the future of film and television because it's not just you know, the urban stories, there's black love, there's coming of age, there's even, you know, young people in tech, there's young people, you know, when I think about Raising Dion on Netflix and just different, different titles, there is just an opportunity for us to just continue to show blackness in all forms. I'm really, really excited about that. The series is called Profiled the Black Man, executive producer Kristen Carter, Newarker with us today. Good to meet you, Kristen. Thank you so much. Really, really excited and proud to be here. Thank you so much.